Hello Internet, my name is Daniel Joseph Nicholas O'Brien, which, yes, means you can call me DJ Knob if you want, and welcome to a brand new episode of Obsessive Pop Culture Disorder, the show that talks about pop culture so much that it practically screams this host doesn't have a girlfriend. Too real. Too real. Today's episode explores... Really? The... I just referenced being alone and lonely. We're gonna do a whole episode about relationships? Cool. Fun. Thanks. Let's look at friends who are mean to each other. And no, I don't mean the friends from the show, The Friends. I mean friends in a general sense from movies and TV. Although, also, yes, the friends from the show, The Friends, is actually, though, a good jumping off point now that I think about it. Here, here are some friends from a show called Friends, which we have to assume is about friends. Give me your money, punk. I've watched home movies of you eating ding-dongs without taking the tinfoil off. <laughs> Get out, you doofus! Hit me, hit me, hit me! <laughs> danger! Ah, danger! danger! They're so mean. The mean friends from Friends aren't the only mean friends. Let's look at the cool group of buddies from American Pie. I got an idea about something new. How about you guys actually locate your dicks, remove the shrink wrap, and f***ing use them? Or these cool buddies from Seinfeld. You're bald! You look like you're five years old. Oh, oh hair, poke guys, groin stuff, whatever I gotta do. You're just out for sex! You're just out for money! I thought we were friends. Or these admitted friends from critically acclaimed Westworld. What the f***? Ding dong. You dressing her up now? Is it becoming like a f***ing hentai thing with you now? No, I just... You f***ing obsessed! You don't even turn you in for your f*** up before, because we're friends, but that was obviously a bad call. I didn't report you before, because we were friends, but in the meantime, f*** you! Are you gonna wear her dress later? Is this a fetish? Or something that's probably vaguely racist? Anyway, I don't know, I don't care. I'm gonna get you fired now, good buddy. Remember when I said from before how we were friends? you. I'll admit that there's some degree of chop busting that goes hand in hand with every relationship I've ever had. I give my closest friends shit and they give me shit. It's true. But what Hollywood ignores is that A, this shit giving is occasional and not the totality of close friendships, and B, it's mostly born out of understanding each other. When I give my friends a hard time, I'm not saying, you're a bad person and I hate you for your flaws. I'm generally calling out some innocuous flaw or quirk they have in a way that says, we're having fun here, but I only get to make this joke because I'm close to you and I know you so well. The jokes I make with my closest friends are celebrations of how well we know each other and confirmations that we are right for getting along. And also, again, importantly, hear me. It's occasional. TV seems to think the totality of close friendships is roasting, which is insane. Most of my conversations with close friends aren't, like, attacking each other. That would be insufferable. My friends and I talk about normal stuff. Stuff like... No! Normal stuff. Normal stuff is what I- God damn it. Okay, movies have for a long time perpetuated this idea that guys like to talk about specific sexual situations with other guys on a regular basis. I dated this girl for a while and she was really a nasty freak. She just loved to get down with sex all the time. She was like, any time of day, she was like, yeah, let's go. I'm so nasty and I'd be nailing her. Oh shit. She'd be like, oh, you're nailing me, cool. Like I sit around asking, well, what's the sex like? Which is to say, what happens when you and your girlfriend have sex? Like, what is this? Is this all born from Greece? I mean, she puts out. Oh, come on, Sonny. Is that all you ever think about? Friggin' A! <laughs> I know it probably seems hard to believe based on my this situation, but I have friends, and they have sex. And harder still to believe, I do too, everybody. I, I do. I have a healthy sex life, and I rarely talk about it, and never share the specific details. And when I meet with my friends, we never talk like this. There is a weird trope that assumes close male friends like to talk about the specifics of f***ing. This specificity is insane to me. Two guys talk about a troublesome relationship, and one guy shimmies his shoulders and leans in like, good weird special sex though, right? And the other guy's like, oh yeah, let me tell you about it in detail. Here it comes. But the only time I have ever in my life considered asking what is the sex like was when I was a child, before I'd had sex. I've had friends who've gotten engaged and I'm pretty sure it would destroy our relationship if I was like, oh, you're gonna marry her, huh? Must be pretty good f***ing your wife to be. Must be pretty good at f***ing. Else you wouldn't want to stick with it. She good at f***ing? Describe it to me. Crazy ex-girlfriend gets it, right? It's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what kind of stuff? Like off the menu? You ever hear of a Mississippi love slide? No. What's that? Okay, you're gross. You need to grow up. I'm... Dear Movies, I'm 31 years old, I'm a, a man, and an uncle, and a full participant in sex, and I never ask about the sex that my friends have, so... Stopping... St stop including that idea in your... In your movies. The syntax got away from me. I started with Dear Movies, and then ended with stop including that in your movies, which must be wrong, but... 
The broader point is... Shut up, movies! You're wrong, movies! Zach Morris is a cool, hunky, popular Native American cross-country star slash theater actor slash rock star slash time god slash accomplished basketball player slash student council member slash SAT genius. God, I love this f***ing show. Screech is an inventor slash nerd slash weird creep slash asocial mutant slash Zach's best friend and the best man at his wedding. Seriously, Zach Morris can manipulate time and Screech built an actual robot and their relationship is still the most inexplicable part of the show. Most inexplicable. Can I say least? Explicable? Can things just ever... Are things ever just explicable? Like, a dog barks and you're just like, that's explicable. Anyway, let's look at the cool buddies in the Hangover movies. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? What? Do what? <laughs> let the dogs out, you know, like, who let the dogs out, who, who... Who brought this guy along? I'm not talking about Zach Galifianakis' character. He's along for the ride because he's related to... Someone relevant to the plot. He wasn't explicitly anyone's best friend, but cool, fun, rabble-rousing dude Phil is supposed to be best friends with uptight, fun-hating, wine machine Stu. Stu is Joe. Joe is soft white rice in lukewarm water. They hang out all the time despite clearly having nothing in common. They're supposed to be such good friends that they worry that an outsider like Galifianakis is going to ruin their fun. That's an actual plot point. He drugged us! I lost the tooth! I married a whore! How dare you! She's a nice lady! In Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I get the relationship between Sloan and Ferris. That makes sense. It's, it's explicable. So explicable. He's magic and she's perfect. But why is Ferris, chillest and most popular guy in school, best friends with a no fun having nervous wreck that is Cameron? I get that friends can have different tastes and interests, but Ferris has to spend literally hours convincing Cameron to have a fun day with him. I feel like complete shit, Ferris. I can't go anywhere. I'm sorry to hear that. Now come on over here and pick me up. Is it always like that? How do they ever have fun together under normal circumstances? What do they talk about when there's not a scheme, ball game, or art museum to distract themselves? Life sure is great, eh, Cameron? No, not for me, Ferris. I hate my dad and I'm actually depressed. Life moves pretty fast. Really? Because for me, it feels unrelentingly slow and endless. We see this trend a lot in cartoons, too. Total rebel punk and uber nervous nerd. Bart Simpson, Milhouse, Tommy Pickles, Chucky Finster, and I'd list more now, but in the researching of this episode, I googled jock and nerd friendship cartoons and got a bunch of fan-drawn pictures of strong jock boys f***ing shy nerdy boys, and that's the sort of thing that stops research right in its tracks. The genre of imagined jocks being secretly romantically linked to imagined nerds seemed to be bringing joy to a very specific corner of the internet. I'm glad you all found each other and found your happiness. Anyway, my point is uh, this, uh, thing exists. The thing I said about friendship. And I get that in real life, friendships aren't exactly identical, and we're not all going to agree on everything, but having a best friend who is your polar opposite seems like it would be difficult on a purely functional level. The Chuckies, Camerons, and Screeches of the world aren't interested in or as good at the things that the Tommies, Ferrises, and Zacks of the world are. I know why Hollywood does this, by the way. It's more interesting to see a diverse group of people in a situation because they want to show a variety in the reactions that the characters have. If Phil's friends in The Hangover were all carefree, bro douchebags, we wouldn't get a spectrum of reactions. Just a bunch of chill dudes with hangovers. And that's not interesting. My point is there's got to be a way to still have a variety of reactions and points of view without straining audience credulity by forcing an implausible friendship down our throats. Man, I like that sentence. Felt good about that sentence. It felt good. Sliding out the mouth. Want to end on that sentence. I have decided that's it for this episode. Join us next month when our topic will be what if the cars from the movie Cars were actually planes? Wait, they already did that? Okay, what if the planes from Cars were toys? What, they did that? Okay, then what's a thing that's not alive in real life that hasn't been brought to life in an animated movie? That's what the episode's gonna be about. What if the thing from, what if the non-living thing was alive? Wow. Now, now see that, that didn't feel good. Trickling out the old whole credulity. It's the liquid you. Correct pluralization of points of view. That all felt nice. Smooth. Smooth D, they'll call me. Chill, 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 chill. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Make sure you do all the YouTube things that you're accustomed to do. Um, for anyone who is going to in the comments tell me that Ferris and Cameron are friends because of uh, an earlier draft of the script, uh, Ferris met a troubled guy and tried to help him but didn't and that person committed suicide and Ferris felt responsible so that's why he hangs out with this equally troubled guy as sort of a, a, a penance for that. Um, I know it seems hard to believe but I, I hope we never run into each other at a party.